Hi, I'm Jerry James Stone, and I'm here at Maker Fair, the eighth annual Maker Fair, and I'm here with Evan Upton of Raspberry Pi. Hello. And we're going to be talking about, well, probably food, because you named your computer after Pi. Mm. And so I'm going to definitely mm. talk oh. to you about food. <laughs> but we're here at the eighth annual Maker Fair. We're doing a series of Google Hangouts today, talking with amazing people like Evan and the very fun things and interesting things that they have going on. So uh, welcome. Is Thank this you. your first this isn't your first maker, This is right? my uh, this is my fourth Maker Fair. Okay. We've done we've done the last two years of both New York and the Bay Area. Okay, so you're a pro. You're a pro. Um, so let's let's just dive into like what you do. You invented this great computer which is sort of um, there's a lot of buzz around this thing, which is it's amazing. Yeah, so 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 I'm one of the I'm one of a, a group of guys in Cambridge who came up with this idea of this thing called the Raspberry Pi. Uh, it's a little credit card sized computer for kids. Uh, of all ages, as it turned out. Right. You know, we had this idea about when we said kids, we we really meant kids. Yeah. And it turns out that yeah, there's a lot of people. A lot of people managed to stay kids all the way through. So. What um, so what was sort of the inspiration for you know the size of it, the cost, you know, I mean, why why kids? Yeah. So so a lot of this comes Not out. Do I have of, anything against yeah. rock kids or anything? <laughs> <like that. laughs> this 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 comes out of our uh, our experience at. Um, uh, at Cambridge, at the University of Cambridge, okay. uh, we we had this. Uh, we found that every year we had fewer and fewer and fewer people oh. applying to read computer science, oh, study computer science, and we we were looked around. Where 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 have all these people gone? You know, why did we lose half our applicants between 1995 and 2005? Well, well we have half, half absolutely. You know, we went from having 500 people to having 250 people. It's that huh. it's that bad, you know. You can just see every year there's just this curve dropping away. Wow! Um, and the idea we had was that there used to be a culture of kids doing tinkering, doing stuff with computers. Oh, I grew up and doing there that. really is. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And there and there really isn't anymore. Right. So this is really trying to reboot some of that stuff that we used to have in the nineteen eighties. So, I exactly. I I grew up. I used to be a software engineer. I'm now a foodie, um, which is why Good I choice. Like, yes. <laughs> um, and you know, I grew up doing that stuff. I had an erector set, all those things. You know building out stuff it was a big part of like why I decided to do that um, what's sort of been the response I mean like you said it was for kids but it's been for kids of all ages and yeah. it's definitely I mean I think it, there's all these applications beyond just you know yeah the, the DIY there. I mean like third world type scenarios sure. I mean, sure. I mean I'm, I'm a software engineer so I thought the cool things that people were going to do with this were, were software things um, I thought people were going to were going to write graphics demos because that's what I did when I was a kid you know, I had my Amiga and I, I wrote a lot of graphics software um, Almost everything that adults and children have done with the Pi would be cool if actually been hardware projects. Using wow. this thing as something which integrates with some bigger, some bigger things. So in the developed world, lots of these you know, people have been putting them under balloons and using them to open their garage doors. There's a wonderful guy who's got a Siri thing where you can ask Siri to open his garage door and it will, it will open open the garage door for him. Oh, that's so awesome. kind of fun. That sort of that sort of flavor. And I think we've seen a lot of these here today at the fair. Um, so that's one thing, and then there's the whole developed world thing was a thing that we had never really occurred to us. But it turns out if you build a computer, if you build a, a cheap little computer that's that's you know suitable for kids to get a start on, for people who've never had a computer as a first computing experience, it makes a pretty good PC. It makes a pretty good productivity machine. Right. What what were some of the design uh, specifications when you went into this? I mean, you wanted it's obviously really tiny. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, we have well, we have four things. So we wanted it to be programmable, obviously. You know, and that, and that's we have today is that there's an enormous amount of computer hardware in the world, right. but a very large amount of it is non programmable like, hardware. You know, your phone, your tablet, your set up box, your games console, these are all amazingly powerful computers, and you can't program them. Right. Uh, you, you can sometimes program right. for them. Yeah, phones. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can sometimes program for them on another computer and right. upload an application onto them, but they're not programmable platforms. So, so that was one goal. It had to be programmable. Okay. We wanted it to be interesting because we want to get it into kids' lives. You know, I didn't buy my computer to learn to. Well, I did actually. It's a lie. <laughs> I, bought my, I bought my computer to learn to program on because I was a big geek uh, when I even when I was ten. I was a big geek. We're, you're, you're at the right place. I'm at the right. So, yeah. I, yeah, I am among friends. <laughs> so, um, but a lot of people they bought their computers to do something else with. They bought them to play games on them. They they, they bought right. them to. Uh, um, to, to do schoolwork on. So this needed to be a thing which, and then they got lured into it. Was a, it was more of a tool. Yeah, I it was a tool, so. and then the fact that it was programmable gave people, just tempted people into it. So it was that idea we wanted to have something which was fun for us, that meant 3D, good 3D performance, oh, good cool. video performance. So this thing can play Blu-ray, Blu-ray quality video, right? Oh, so, very cool. so it's, you know, th those sorts of things would get it into a child's life for some other reason. I and mean, just sit there being programmed in the corner, you know, just, just tempting people. And even if only 1%, if, if we can get them into every child's life, even if only 1% of people then actually take it up, take up that, right. that, that challenge, then that's a vast supply of people. That's really going to make a difference to a enormous number of people. 
Right, so that was another thing. We wanted it to be robust, so we wanted something you could stick in a school bag and take out a okay. school bag a hundred times. And we wanted it to be cheap because if you're going to ask someone to buy something, a specific um, thing to to do programming on, you can't ask them to buy a two hundred dollar right. device. We wanted we thought twenty five dollars would be kind of the price of a textbook. Uh, okay. I think we were wrong about that. <laughs> it was, was twenty five dollars. That's that's where that money comes from. Yeah. Okay. And we had that before anything else. So, I mean, it's it's pretty much designed for the maker crowd. I mean, yeah, absolutely. Know, people who yeah, like yeah. to blow things up. Yeah, as it turns <laughs> as it turns out, and you know, people who want to blow things up, including the pie. You know, one of right. the lovely things about the pie is. It is really reasonably robust, but you can't blow it up. You shoot twelve volts up, it, you will blow it up. Right. But the thing is, when you blow it up, you've blown up a, a twenty-five dollar computer, and right. you go and get another twenty-five dollar. Right, right. I think people find that. A bit. So I have to ask you because I'm I'm a bit of an environmentalist, so I, I'm be on the spot just a little bit with this. I'm just kind of curious, like if this has been part of the design process. But you know, we talk about. I mean, I think it's great that we have the opportunity to have something so small that you know is accessible that people can learn from. Um, but that also, you know, when you have things that are cheaper and you know easier to access it also creates like things like e-waste becomes like a bigger issue and you sort of how does raspberry pi is that part of the design process or? yeah um so it's interesting the e-waste thing is interesting i don't know how it works here but in, in the eu now you need to uh you need to buy you need, you need to buy a kind of a permit to make electronics so okay. you, you kind of for, for every and it's on the tonnage basis so you you say you know you, you're, it's called the waste electronic equipment something W E E E, um, and you have to buy every time you emit a ton of electronic equipment. You need to effectively pay the cost of okay. safely disposing of that. You, you pay that up front. And oh, that's interesting. Used to, used to dispose of it. You have there's a little um, wheelie bin, a little rubbish bin logo that right. you see on a lot of electronics now. That's, that's that's what that's about. Now the interesting thing with the Pi, even the Model B, which is the more expensive, heavier Raspberry Pi, weighs 42 grams. Uh, and so to, it's taken us a very long time to even get through our first ton of, uh, to even get through the first ton of Raspberry Pi. So I think there's 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 value in that. Um, there's I guess there's an argument that there, there are there are two things. One is that you could reuse existing hardware rather than buying this new piece of hardware. Um, we think that the energy footprint uh, once you take once you take a, to a kind of environmental total cost of ownership, um, the energy right. footprint of using this little device rather than, rather than using you know a ten year old. Uh, Pentium 2, right. <laughs> uh, as you're, you know, re recycling old machines, yes. that looks good, but you very rapidly find you've burnt enough fossil fuels to, to, to pay for the cost of just making a, uh, making a raspberry pi. Okay. Um, the other one, I mean, there's a, there is a, there's a concern for us around a thing called Jeevan's paradox. I don't know if you've heard of this. I don't. Think this I this have is that. from the from from the Victorian era. This guy. a lot of makers that shun at the fact uh, that they don't know that. Right now. Well, no, this this this, this <laughs> is really cool. This is this is a Victorian guy, and what he noticed was that when you make a, if you make the energy consumed by a particular machine. Lower. If you make a particular machine more energy efficient, the total amount of energy consumed by all instances of that machine goes up. Because what happens is they become more attractive. Something that doesn't consume a lot of energy. Right. You make a steam engine more. And he was thinking about uh, steam okay. engines. Right? You make a steam engine uh, more energy efficient. It makes it more economically attractive. So you sell more steam engines. Yes. So although each steam engine consumes less, the total consumed is much more. And I always worry about this with little cheap computers, little cheap low energy computers. They look really eco friendly, but if right. you then you, you you have five billion of them. Right. Actually, that's still that's still a lot of that's yes. still a lot of energy. Yeah. So, so it's, it's always a question asked whenever anyone says, "Hey, we're making you know we're making computers, uh, we're, right. we're doing good for the environment, we're making computers more energy efficient." <laughs> it's like, well, well it's pretty much established that doesn't work. It, yeah, exactly, exactly. Well, it is it is sort of something that like, I don't think we've properly dealt with here in the US either. Uh, US is definitely. I mean, I think that there's a lot to be learned from the Raspberry Pi model. I mean, I think that you know accessibility is such a great thing, especially like you said, you know, kids are not applying for those programs anymore and you know getting sciences to kids so they can tinker and play around and you know it, that's a really really great idea um, I think that's one of the things I would love for us to figure out though mm. is definitely that eat that you waste issue yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. so wh why is it called Raspberry Pi that's, okay. that's that's the one thing you know that's <laughs> I was um, going to Google it and look it up beforehand to see if I could find out, but I figured yeah, I would just ask to okay. get straight from the source. This is good. So Raspberry is, is fruit named computer companies. There are a lot of fruit named computer companies Got it. Okay. In, the, in the world. You know. Um, yes. Yes. We're both. Oh like, uh, yeah. We're both. We're both fruit <laughs> believers here. Um, so so we had a lot of those in the UK as well. There were a lot of uh, I think probably inspired not inspired by the, inspired by your guys probably the rather, <laughs> rather than these guys. There were a lot of um, companies in the um, in the UK. The moment. There was like Tangerine. Oh. <laughs> and of course, Acorn, which was the kind right. of great granddaddy of, 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 well, of ARM. In fact, the, the company that ARM eventually came out of. Okay. Um, so, and Acorn's technically fruit. Uh, so, the fruit named computer companies, and in Pi was Python. So, okay. we, we love Python. You know, we love all programming languages, but we love Python. 
extra specially. Okay. Um, and we wanted to, we originally, the, one of the earliest prototypes we had was a machine which just ran Python. Just ran okay. Python. Okay. And so we, we actually froze the name of the device at that point. We incorporated our foundation, we froze the name. And then, of course, the, the, the device has become much more flexible and powerful. It's become a Linux PC rather than just a Python box. Right. Um, and so we've ended up with a um, we've ended up with this kind of legacy name. But it's, it's, and I hated it for the first year. <laughs> I hated it so badly. Um, and um, the um, it's a great name. I mean, it I is a great name. You know, I mean, it's, it really I, I, lo I love it now. And I, I've been in the puns are endless. The pun, and that's the thing. It just keeps giving you the raspberry <laughs> and the pie side. They just give you puns. Right, right. It's brilliant. And I mean, of course, it's got a, th a food theme as well. We, exactly. We, we like our food. At, at um, yeah, you said your wife is a foodie, right? Yeah, so so Liz, who does all of our social media for us, um, she and the lots of our uh, communications, she was a food journalist before when we got our big surprise that Raspberry Pi was interesting to people, which we didn't see coming, um, <laughs> really? she stopped. Yeah, we really did. I mean, we thought we were going to make 100,000, 10,000, best case. At least. How um, many have you made so far? 1.3 million? 1.3 million. That's a lot of computers. <laughs> Uh, and, and it's cool because because we, we the, the very first batch I ever got was two thousand was two thousand it's half power. Okay. And this guy we ordered these two thousand computers from these guys in China we never met and they built them for us and did a great job. And this guy came in from DHL it was his little van and a little pallet jack and jacked his little pallet out of the back of his van and brought it into one of my colleagues' garage and just jacked it down and drove off. Wow. And there was this kind of cube with two thousand computers more powerful than any computer I ever had when I was. The kid, and we just stood there for about half an hour staring at it, and then we got one out and we booted it, and it worked. We got another one out, and we booted it, and it worked. And it's like, oh, these these work. Wow. And we've actually made two thousand computers. Did a little dance. Um, so so when I so I always the dance part's the best part. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You know, that's what it's all, all about. So um, whenever I think about Raspberry Pis, I always think about them in units of two thousand because that was the last big chunk of Raspberry Pis. I, that's why I'm high. I saw together, and you know that is a lot of those. You know, whatever that is, that's. Ooh, it's, it's, 700 of those right. half pallets, and that's a lot. You know, that's a kind of Indiana, like the Indiana Jones warehouse scene. You, know, you just imagine this big right. warehouse full of pies. <laughs> but not real pies, the pies. Well, that would be nice. That would be nice. And it is lunchtime, so it is. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> we keep, oh, we have, we're surrounded by, we're in this Airstream, I don't know if you guys can see, but we have this Airstream that we're doing it's interviews from. Incredibly awesome. Yeah, it's um, my first time in an Airstream, actually, and uh, but we're surrounded by all the food trucks here, so we just get whiffs of all this great food as we talk about Raspberry Pi. Yeah. And it's nice to be inside an Airstream, so I spent a lot of time this week driving across the desert, and uh, you drive past an Airstream, and you get, ah, it's kind of like <laughs> just blinding flash, and so you go past, you go through the focal point. You're on the, you're on the right side of it yeah. now. Um, so what's next with Raspberry Pi? What do you guys... Uh, we have planned um, anything so, fun and exciting that we well. So, so we've got two things we're talking about today. Um, we have a camera okay. for the Ras Raspberry Pi. I'm going to tease everyone today because we made 10,000 cameras oh. and uh, we sold them all on Tuesday. Um, so, yeah, no, it's great, but it means that there's now a pipeline left. We we will learn our lesson. Well, I swear that the first time we actually build a large number of a product, that'll be the product that doesn't sell. <laughs> uh, yeah, but, but we will. We, we need to learn our lesson. So we built ten thousand. So there's going to be a few week delay. Before we it sounds like a good formula. Ones. I think you should stick with that. <laughs> yeah, it's, it is cool, and it's it's just a little thing. It's about sort of uh, sort of size, um, and it goes on the ribbon cable from the Pi, and it's a five megapixel, twenty five dollars, five megapixel sensor. You can record ten eighty p video. You can take five megapixel stills. Um, it's very cute. Okay. So I'm hoping, I, uh, assuming that my package from the UK with one end has turned up and Sabrina has it, <laughs> I will. Uh, I'll be demoing that on the stage later. What time will that be? Uh, it's four o'clock. Okay. Four o'clock. So, so we're doing that. The other thing we're going to demo is we have this thing we, which we call the new out of box software, um, and um, it's it's designed to make Pi more usable to, to, to people straight out of the box. So what it is, it's, it's a, um, some software we write onto the SD card. Okay. And you boot it, and then it asks you what you what you want to do. With Okay. So it says, do you want to configure this part to run Debian? Do you want to run, do you want to just configure it straight away as a media center? Because a lot of people configure them as media centers. Okay. So what do you want to do? And then it will, uh, and if you have trouble, it also has a web browser. So it boots in a couple of seconds, and it has a web browser. Oh, really? that you, that's, you, you press a button, and it opens a web browser. What browser to do you run on it? Uh, that is <laughs> probably some web kit. I think it's some custom. Okay. That's some little custom oh, yeah. web kit, um, uh, web kit GT, GTK okay. um, thing. Um, but we... Um, uh, that that you press a button and it opens a web browser connects to off points. So you so if you're having trouble right at the if you're falling at the first hurdle with your Pi, you press this button and it will it will take you to our forum so you can oh. help. 
Okay, that's um, So great. we're going to hopefully demo that as well. So these are both hopefuls. Um, if neither of those demos come off, I'll be talking to Matt about this stuff. So those, okay. are the two big, those are the two big things <laughs> in our life this week. Awesome, awesome. Well, uh, thank you so much for taking time oh, to have a quick chat with you. us today. Uh, if you guys are here at Maker Fair, uh, you have till four to get here to catch. I've been talking. Yep. Um, and if you see us walking around, then um, uh, Liz and I are both here. Uh, we both have big piles of Raspberry Pi stickers. If you see us walking around, a call, do a, do accost us and demand a sticker, and we will keep giving them out until we run out. <laughs> Make them do the dance. The dance. Yeah, I'll do the little dance. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm Jerry James Stone. We're here at Maker Fair in San Mateo, uh, filming from Narrow Stream. And thank you so much again for joining us. And we'll talk to you guys soon. Thank you.